I know you guys are sickos and you want to talk about it. Scott Frost. Whew. This is not one that you were wanting to lose heading into Oklahoma week. I will tell you that right now. Uh, 45 to 42, Georgia Southern comes down and gets the dub. And I, I'm just, I'm just as shocked this morning as I was last night as I was watching this game because I, I just did not expect that, right? Um, looking at the actual post game win expectancy, um, Nebraska probably should have won this game based on the overall stats. Now, Georgia Southern did have more yards per play, 7.5 to 7.1. They did have more total yards, uh, 642 to 575. That's a lot of yards, by the way. Like, what Clay Helton has done at Georgia Southern in one offseason is mind-blowing. Just mind-blowing. But it does kind of let Nebraska know that, hey, you can hire somebody, and they can come in and fix this thing pretty quickly. You don't have to stick with the same crap that's losing over and over and over again, which, by the way, another one-score loss for Scott Frost. 13 third-down tries. Both teams hit nearly 70%. They were 9 of 13. Uh, Two fourth-down tries for Georgia Southern. Nebraska did not go for it on fourth down, but Georgia Southern got both of theirs. Eight scoring opportunities for the Eagles there to only seven for Nebraska, but Nebraska had more points per scoring opportunity as far as field position. Georgia Southern had the uh, it, they they had the field position advantage. Their own twenty five to Nebraska's own eighteen. I mean, just nuts. Uh, Darren Jennings Frost might not make it to Monday. No, they're <laughs> they should fire Frost right now. This is from Humphrey. Uh, they should fire Frost right now. So if he upsets us this weekend, it won't save his job. His job ain't saved. You you cannot lose to Georgia Southern and Northwestern and then go beat Oklahoma and find a way to save your job. Like I, Now, I don't know if they fire him at the end of the season or if they fire him on October 1 when that buyout drops, but it, he will be let go this year because this is just inexcusable. And I understand that the defense is bad. We saw it in week zero. We know what's up, and it didn't look great against North Dakota. But I cannot begin to tell you how bad it is that a team that is one year removed from basically running the triple option comes in with a passing game that they just had guys transfer in on. They just found a way in the offseason to flip it. You hired a guy from USC that was disgraced, that was run out of town, and he is now the head coach down in Statesboro, and he's got a quarterback that he brought in from Buffalo and they went 37 out of 56 for 409 yards on you. And on top of that, like forget the passing stuff, the running game for Georgia Southern. 30 carries, 233 yards, five touchdowns. That's 7.8 yards a clip. It is impossible to be this bad. And yet, it continues to get worse. I don't know how they continue to do this. Um uh, it's not like Nebraska wasn't able to move the football. 575 yards ain't nothing to sneeze at, right? Uh, it's not like Whipple's not doing a, a decent job. You know, Casey Thompson had 318 yards passing, one touchdown, and no picks. Like, Nebraska, I, I, they didn't turn the ball over. Georgia Southern turned the ball over and still won the game. If you're a Nebraska fan, you have got to be just mortified at what this football program is at this point. Because I, I can't even begin to explain it here. Uh, and yet, the win probability throughout the ball game, if you look here at, on the left side of your screen, it stayed up almost the entire time until it finally got to the point where the, the computers were like, no, we, hey, they're not going to win the game. we we got to shift this thing at some point. <laughs> EPA per play on both teams was actually really good. It's just, you if you're a big-time football program, you can't be getting into shootouts with Schools like Georgia Southern, and this is no offense to Georgia Southern, just so that you guys don't jump in here and get irritated at me. What I'm saying is I don't believe Georgia Southern fans even believed that they were going to go in in week two of year one of Clay Helton and find a way to beat Scott Frost in year five at Nebraska. That's what I'm saying. I think that's easy enough to put out there. Uh, it's It blows my mind. 
It really does blow my mind. And I feel for uh, Nebraska fans uh, because I I think that they deserve better because, I mean, my gosh, you want to talk about loyal fans? That's that's really loyal fans. And this is not, this is not what you deserve. But, alas, here we go. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.